Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. A while back I posted a video about some crazy backstage production secrets and you all seemed to like it, so I thought I'd give you some more of what you like. So here are 5 more production secrets from behind the scenes on RuPaul's Drag Race. Please note that a spoiler alert is in place for this video. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Frankenstein footage. So we all know that reality TV, despite the name, is quite often anything but reality, and this is unsurprisingly often the case with Drag Race. Several Drag Race contestants have claimed that the producers take certain parts of the footage they have and cut it together with footage from a completely separate moment in order to create the narrative that the producers want. In other words, creating their own version of events. Because of this mashing of lots of different parts together of the different footage, it's sometimes called Frankenstein editing because the Frankenstein monster was also made up of lots of different parts. An example of this can be seen in season 4 with Jeremy Carey, formerly known as Fifi O'Hara. In the episode 6 challenge, Float Your Boat, during the lip sync, Milan takes off her wig and then it cuts to Jeremy's confessional where Jeremy says, quote, that's clearly a dude. This was supposed to make it sound as though Jeremy was referring to Milan as a dude. However, we can tell by what Jeremy is wearing that this confessional came from another day. Earlier in the same episode, when Jeremy is talking about Jiggly Caliente's boat, Jeremy is wearing a totally different outfit. In fact, this exact same soundbite of Jeremy saying, quote, that's clearly a dude, was also used in episode 10, which was called Dads I'd Like to Frock, when the contestants had to make over fathers. In the episode, Jeremy is talking about his partner for the episode and commenting on how the father has a very masculine walk. So it appears as though the producers took the soundbite from this episode and applied it to an earlier episode to make it look like Jeremy was calling Milan a dude, even though Jeremy wasn't talking about Milan when he said that. There's also a similar story that YouTuber Joseph Shepard talked about on his channel during an interview with season 9 contestant Peppermint. Joseph said that he was in the audience for the season 9 finale and at one point they show a shot of him cheering in the audience just after Sasha Velour did her infamous rose petal reveal. However, Joseph said that actually he was cheering for Peppermint's reveal but in the edit they made it look like he was cheering for Sasha's reveal. Joseph went on to say that the Sasha Rose Petal reveal quote wasn't that big of a deal in the theatre because it was hard to see what was going on probably because the stage is far away and you only got to really see it properly when you watched it on TV. And this also lends itself to the theory that producers use footage in order to create different narratives to what actually happened. Fake Chocolate in season 14 of Drag Race US, they introduced something that they hadn't done before where they gave each contestant a chocolate bar and one of them was the golden chocolate bar which would save them from elimination. And at the end of each lip sync, the moment where the contestants open the chocolate bar to see if it's the golden one or not and then they say, quote, it's chocolate, went viral online. However, many people questioned whether production knew which queen had the golden chocolate bar and if they were manipulating the situation. And people also were sceptical because on the show it was made to look like the queens had the chocolate bar underneath their clothes while lip syncing, but if that were the case, the chocolate would most likely melt. During a viewing party at Roscoe's Tavern in Chicago, the queens who were there, which were Orion Story, Diabetti and Maddie Morphosis, were asked about this topic and Orion spilt some tea. One of the hosts asked, do you eat the chocolate? And Orion responded by saying, quote, it was plastic, it wasn't real chocolate. Maddie and Dyer then look very shocked that Orion had admitted to that and it's assumed by their reaction that it's because this was a production secret and Orion wasn't supposed to talk about it. 
Maddie then pulls out her phone and jokingly says, quote, Rue just texted me, you're in trouble. And then Orion made a joke about a sniper rifle dot appearing on her forehead. Outfits provided by production. As we all know, the contestants are sent a list of each runway category several weeks before filming so they can prepare the outfits to bring with them. However, there are some group challenges where it's unclear if the queens were told to bring the outfits or whether they were provided by production because often the outfits match so perfectly to each other and other times they don't. This question was actually addressed by season 8 contestant Nasha Lopez during a viewing party at Roscoe's. That week's guests at Roscoe's were season 14 contestants Kerry Colby and Deja Sky, and Nasha asked them whether they were provided outfits for the 60s girl group challenge. Nasha then went on to explain that on her season, quote, there was a rack and we got to pick our outfits. Kerry then explained that, quote, they had a selection of outfits and each outfit was pre-selected for the group. But this doesn't seem to be the case for every season. For example, on Drag Race UK Season 2, the Rue Revision Song Contest in Episode 5, the queens were separated into two groups and had to find costumes for themselves to wear out of their own wardrobes. And during the judges' critiques, the losing team was criticised for not having matching outfits, and Judge Graham Norton even said, quote, All your looks, even though there was a colour palette through it, it didn't gel as a group. So it does seem unfair in a way that some people are given outfits for the challenges and on other seasons they're not given outfits and then they get judged on not having matching outfits. Lost footage. Art Simone competed on season one of Drag Race Down Under and was eliminated in episode two but then returned to the competition in episode four. It was never explained why Art returned to the competition and there were many fan theories circulating on the internet. The issue was once again brought up in June 2022 when Art tweeted saying, quote, Oh my god, the NDAs for Drag Race Down Under expire in six days. I wonder if anyone has any questions. And she later posted a video of herself pulling lots of receipts out of a bag and the caption said, quote, I'm ready. She also implied there was some drama involving fellow competitor, etc, etc, when a fan tweeted to Art and asked, quote, I always wondered why episode 5 didn't have an untucked. And Art replied to this tweet saying, quote, at Glamourbug, which is etc, etc's Twitter handle, has some wonderful insights, dot, dot. But Art later seemingly backtracked on this and tweeted, quote, Oh my god, my bad, I'm so terrible at maths, it's actually 600 years, I'm so silly. Many people on Twitter asked if Art was going to explain the reason why she was mysteriously brought back to the competition in episode 4. However, it appears as though Art may have already explained this previously. In a now-deleted tweet from June 2021, Art said, quote, Now that's over, am I allowed to talk about how they lost the footage and we had to come back days later to film my elimination and then Coco Jumbo and I had to do that lip sync three times in a row. So it is speculated that production lost the footage of their elimination, so Art was brought back in order to refilm it, although no official explanation has ever been given. And this caused some controversy amongst fans who felt as though it was unfair to not invite back Coco Jumbo to the competition and some people even accused the production of favouring Art which is why they brought her back instead of Coco. Art also confirmed during a live appearance that it was her that sent the mysterious threatening letter to Coco Jumbo leaving it on her station and the letter said quote watch out. This is because Coco Jumbo was the one who eliminated Art in episode 2 by beating her in the lip sync. In the live appearance video, Art joked and said she quote, wrote it with her left hand so no one would know the letter was from her. The Lipstick Mystery Starting in All Stars 5, they began a tradition where the top queen of the week would lip sync against a mystery lip sync assassin. 
The assassin is always a drag race alum, and if they win the lip sync, they have to reveal which queen the other queens have voted to leave the competition. The assassins are always shown pulling the lipstick out of their outfits before they reveal it, and in Untucked, they also show the assassin arriving to studio and being handed the lip sync before going on stage. So, this always begs the question from fans as to whether the queens lip sync with the lipstick in their outfit or not, because if they did, there would be the risk that it would fall out, and it may also be uncomfortable to lip sync with a lipstick digging into your skin. Well, this question seems to have been answered by Season 5 and All Stars 2 contestant Roxy Andrews. During a viewing party, Roxy was asked whether the queens perform with the lipsticks or whether they get them back after, and Roxy replied, quote, we get them back. And this then answered the question that they do not in fact lip sync with the lipstick in their outfits, they get given it afterwards by production. So there you go, there were some more crazy production secrets from behind the scenes on RuPaul's Drag Race. Did you know any of these secrets already? And were any of them new to you? Let me know in the comments! As usual, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you liked this video. Currently less than 7% of people watching are actually subscribed to my channel, which makes me so sad, so please, please just subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me again in the future. Thank you, bye!